Okay, so um, we'll move on to dolphin watching because um, we have a lot of sunset and dolphin watching cruises here in the Maldives and worldwide. Dolphin watching is a very positive activity. It is good. It allows people to go out and see these animals in their natural habitat in the wild where they belong. Not in a swimming pool, out in the wild where they belong, where they are free. And this industry developed very, very rapidly in the 1980s. This is the same time when we were putting all the bans, all the stops on whaling. And everybody thought, fantastic, we have this great alternative industry. Instead of going out and killing the whales and dolphins, we can go out and watch them. It's better for the environment and the ecology because you're not killing the animals. But it also makes more money than the whaling industry ever did. The dolphin watching industry is more lucrative than the whaling industry. So people thought, fantastic, instead of going out and killing, we'll run the dolphin watching trips, we'll make much more money, great, 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 great. Nobody stopped to think if the boats being there around the dolphins had any sort of impact on them, caused any problems, caused an effect. And slowly concerns started to develop. In 1994, the International Whaling Commission put together a working group to look at these concerns, to see if we were having any sort of impact on our whales and dolphins just by going out to watch them. And what they came up with is disturbance. This is the major conservation concern to whales and dolphins today. The boats and the noise, all the anthropogenic noise associated, just being around the dolphins, causing a change in their behavior, which in some cases can affect their survival. Um, so for us, these are our D&D signs that we have for our guests. And we put it back to this. When the eyes are open, yep, they're awake, you can knock, come in, no problem. When the do not disturb sign is up, eyes closed, please do not disturb. And you go ahead and you knock on the door of a guest or someone who has these, this please do not disturb sign up. They're usually not very happy. They don't want to be disturbed. They might be sleeping. They've said, please do not disturb, and you have. Uh, so this is the same idea, disturbance. Okay, the dolphins are going to have times maybe when they're resting or feeding, that they do not want to be disturbed. And us being there is annoying them. We are disrupting them. And disturbance has um, three levels of impact. We have our immediate impacts. This is the boat hitting the dolphins or the whales. And this is going to cause injury and in some cases death. Uh, if they get hit by the propellers, sliced by the propellers, uh, porpoises or dolphins, that's going to kill them. And this is a bottlenose uh, that we had in Wales. Uh, he got hit by a boat at the back of the body. The back of the body was taken off. The tail now hangs lopsided. He has difficulty swimming, has to come completely vertical to dive. And when we last saw him, it was starting to get very thin, very emaciated, because he can't swim properly, which means he's not hunting properly. So he's not getting the food he needs. He's starting to get very, very thin. And um, eventually, he's going to die. He hasn't been seen for a long time now. And then we have our short-term impacts. So these are the behaviors, uh, the day-to-day -day activities that dolphins can get up to, which we can disrupt or disturb or cause a change in. First, we have their swimming speed and direction. So if they're traveling nice and slowly, straight ahead, come along, and they speed away from us, that is a change. We've caused a change there. Surfacing behavior, uh, very typical. Driving the boat over top of a group of dolphins causes them to dive. And then they're staying underwater. They are holding their breath. So we're just changing how regularly they want to breathe. We force them away again. Communication, like we said, they rely on sound. If we're creating too much sound, revving the engines, the engines are at a very, very high frequency or a low frequency that's in their hearing range, it's going to disrupt them. It's going to disrupt their communication systems. And like we said, mothers and calves need to stay together. They need to be able to hear each other. Group size and cohesion. So we might have a nice group of 40 dolphins all nicely grouped together 
boat comes along and they start scattering off in different directions. Mating and nursing. We can disrupt them in the middle of mating. And if they're not mating, then they can't have any babies. If there's no babies, then there's not going to be any adult dolphins. It goes on for a long time, the population will decrease. Nursing, so the mother swims slowly for the calf to be able to drink the milk. If the boat's around and she's swimming off too fast, <laughs> the calf won't be able to suckle. Feeding and resting patterns, so they're trying to hunt. When they're trying to hunt, we're driving around all over them. Again, they can't communicate to hunt properly, or we're just getting in the way of the fish and causing the fish and the squid to scatter, which is then making it more difficult for them. Resting patterns, they're just trying to sleep. A boat comes along when you're in the middle of trying to sleep. And increased aggression, so that tail slapping, for example. They can be more aggressive towards one another and they can show us as well that they are annoyed. For example, that tail slapping. In New Zealand, they found that when the boats are around, their bottlenose dolphins spend less time resting. So it's the same as yourselves. If you go a whole night without sleep or a couple of nights of not getting a good night's sleep, you tend to feel tired. You're tired, you're a little bit exhausted, you can't work properly, you can't focus, you don't eat properly, you tend to grab for the, the sugar, Coca-Cola or something, instead of eating something healthy. And for the dolphins, really important that they stay alert because they need to keep an eye out for those predators, those sharks, and make sure they also need to keep out for these boats, make sure they're not going to get hit by a boat or something. In Western Australia, they have a lot of tiger sharks and they have a lot of problems um, with their bottlenose staying together in a nice tight group. Uh, they've got very high death rates of their calves in Western Australia. Mothers and calves getting separated and the calves being attacked by the tiger sharks. In New South Wales, their humpback whales spend more time diving, staying underwater when the boats are around. Uh, so first of all, you're making them hold their breath. So yes, they will dive to deep depths to go after their food, but when they are resting, they usually stay fairly shallow. Because... Like we talked about, when you go deeper, you've got the pressure and you've got the nitrogen. So they don't want to spend too much time deeper underwater because the, the pressure and the nitrogen, it causes a lot of physiological stress on the body. Very strenuous for the body to be under those conditions. So all of these together can lead to our long-term impacts. This we might see after a month, six months, a year. Uh, big thing, altering their distribution and range. So they could change which channel they take in and out of an atoll because they don't want to come across the boats. Or they could leave an atoll altogether and go somewhere else, go to another atoll. And then you've got all the ecological impacts of losing those top predators from an area. And of course, the increased chronic stress. So the stress of continually being disturbed, not getting the sleep, not hunting properly, the boat's always there, getting really, really stressed out. Stress is very bad for the body. Exactly the same as for humans. It's very bad for the body. You're more likely to get sick. Uh, if you get very severely sick, it um, can cause death. And very even very stressed out people can't reproduce very well. So they can't have children very well. 